7. We're looking at uh, some of these <clears throat> verses and passages tonight. From the middle of last month until just last week, um, thousands of athletes had come together over in Paris for what are called the 2024 Olympics. It's very obviously very popular, something that happens about every four years, normally, both in the summer and in the winter. And athletes come together and they're preparing themselves to be able to compete with one another. And of course, this is a tradition, they tell us, from back to the first century. Back even maybe before the first century when athletes in various places would come together and they would compete in things such as track and field and wrestling and boxing and a lot of other activities and sports at that time. It's, it's kind of like now, and almost each, each every, every time when uh, there's a new Olympics or another Olympics, they keep adding sports. In fact, uh, if you watch, you probably see sports. Uh, where did that come from? How did that, what's that all about? Um, they all kind of look a lot of, uh, they all kind of look similar. Uh, they kind of all resemble basketball or soccer or something. They just have different, kind of different forms and different names. But uh, it is something that, uh, uh, you know, was very, has been very popular and is, is really. Of course, as, I will have to put, say this, as Christians, we can't really um, <clears throat> say too much about their clothing. Uh, you know, a lot, of the time, a lot of the clothing that they wear is, is almost no clothing. And uh, so from a Christian standpoint, it's, it's, you know, we have a, probably a different opinion of that. But beyond that and beside that, there was no doubt that the Apostle Paul probably um, knew about the, and the, what he would call the Olympics back in the first century. He was aware of the competitions. He was aware that they were coming together just as people have done in, in the United States and, and other places around the world. He's aware of that, and, and it's no accident then that he was writing to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses uh, 24 through 27 about this very thing. Paul is here, though, making some spiritual applications, and, and that's what it's all about. And he's coming from a perspective here of that they all that are, are in the games, those that are running, those that are participating, are those that want to win. And of course, that's the way it is. Each one that participates, if you, you are participating, you want to win. You want to, uh, you want to come in first. Of course, as Christians, what we're taught, the comparison is, or the application is, is that we as Christians, we want to win in this race that we're in. We're not in competition with one another. It's not that, that thing at all. In fact, we are helping one another. We're, we are a body. We are helping one another. We are all running in this together. But individually, we are in competition with Satan. We're in competition with the world. And the world is trying to, to beat us. So Paul is writing this to help us to understand taking the physical aspects of sports, of competition, of running, of various other activities, and making the spiritual application uh, for us as Christians. And he talks about this, first of all, that the victory comes through participation. We have to be participants in this. In 1 Corinthians chapter four, 9 and verse 24, the first part of that verse, he says, do you not know that those who run in a race all run? It's almost a, a redundant statement. It's almost a statement that it's just so obvious. But that is exactly the point, that those who are in the race are in the race and they are participating in the race. They are running in the race. They're not on the sideline. They are there participating and they're running in that. And so that is the part that we play in this. We can't be Christians who are standing on the sidelines. We can't be Christians who are just uh, observers of, of others. But we individually ourselves must be participants. Participants in this race that is a spiritual race. Personal victory comes by personal participation. Now, as we notice this, there is no race without participants. There's no Olympics without participants. 
People could organize it and they could get it all together and, and they could fill the stadium with people that are watching. But if there were no participants, in reality, there would be no Olympics. There would be no sports. And there would be no victory for a Christian without participation. So we've got to be participants in it. And that's the first thing that, that Paul is letting us know here. He says, do you not know that those who run in a race all run? Everybody is going to have to run. If we're going to be participants, if we're going to be involved in the Christian life, then we must be active in this race as well. But we also find that there's another passage in that of Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. In this passage, Paul writes about being uh, qualified. He says in uh, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12, the beginning of that, thanks to, thanks to God, the Father has qualified us to be partakers, or we might even say participants, of the inheritance of the saints of light. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12. He has qualified us. He's made us uh, uh, able to be able to, uh, able to participate. We think about the Olympics. This year, people were actually participating in the Olympics. Last year, earlier this year and last year, people were trying to qualify for the Olympics. There were uh, countless races and countless events of swimming and, and, and all of the events that take place in the Olympics. All of those things were taking place earlier this year. They were taking place last year. And even really from the last Olympics, all during that time period, people are competing and people are trying to qualify for the next Olympics. Well, we have to be qualified too. We have to be qualified in order to participate in this race that we're in that is the Christian life. And how is that? Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12, he says, God, thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance and the saints in light. How has that come about? It's come about through Christ Jesus. It's come about through Jesus going upon the cross and paying the debt of our sins. It's come about when we ourselves have put faith in him and we have responded. And we have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is he who has qualified us for being able to participate and run in this, this race that is the Christian race. But as we also think about it, then we are participants in that. We've qualified to become a Christian in a sense. We've qualified to be able to participate in this race, but then we have to actually participate. It's one thing to be qualified, but it's another thing to participate. There were probably some, some people in this Olympics that just took place that had qualified, but for some reason, they did not participate in the race. Maybe it was because of an illness, maybe it was because of an injury, maybe it was because of a personal situation that they had in their family. Yes, they were qualified, but they didn't participate. So that meant there's no way they were gonna win. There was no way they were going to get a gold medal or a silver or a bronze medal. There was no way that they were going to be able to win because they didn't participate, even though they had qualified. Now, sometimes that's how we are as Christians. That's the situation for some Christians. We've qualified. That is, we have become a Christian. By the blood of Christ, we've been qualified. By the blood of Christ and by obedience or responding to the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have been qualified to participate in this race. But sometimes things happen. People lose their faith. Uh, people uh, decide, I'm not going to participate. I'm just going to, well, I was baptized. Everything's okay, and I'm just going to go on my own way. How many times has that happened in people's lives? They become qualified to participate, but they say, I'm not going to participate. So there is a qualification that might take place, but still there has to be a participation. And we as Christians are participants in this race. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, he says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let us run with endurance or with patience the race that is set before us. 
Hebrews chapter 1, and then, of course, going on into Hebrews chapter, uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, and then going on into chapter uh, verse 2. It is a race that we're in as Christians. It's a, it's a race. It is that we have been qualified and that we are participants in this. But how are we to do that? Well, Paul wrote about himself. As he concluded one of his letters to Timothy in, 1 Timothy, or in 2 Timothy chapter 4, in verse 7, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Of course, there's laid up for me that crown of righteousness. He said that he had fought the good fight. He's using terms here that could be not only from a sense of a battle, but also a sense of the participating in the games. He had finished the course. He had, uh, he had run the race. He had done all of these things. But ultimately, it means really what he had done in all of this is that he had kept the faith. He'd kept the faith in his life. He'd kept the faith in what he taught. He had kept the faith in his participation of the race. He didn't stop running. He didn't stop fighting. He didn't stop, he didn't change courses, so to speak. But he continued on in this race. And that's what the athlete does. And that's what is our responsibility, of course, our part as Christians, as we are participants in this. We can't change the course. We've keep the course. Uh, we've got to keep the faith. We've got to keep the truth that we find in the Word of God. We've got to keep living the truth that we find in the Word of God as well. We've got to keep participating in the things that God wants us to participate in, and that is his body, that is the church. But like an athlete, the participant, the Christian, is going to face challenges. If, if you could interview or you could ask the athletes that, are, that participated in the Olympics this year, do you think that they all would have said, oh, it's just been so easy. Oh, it's, it's just been uh, easy for me. I've not had a problem. I've never had a, a, an ache or a pain. I've never pulled a muscle. I, there's never been a day when I didn't want to, to practice. There's never been a day when I wouldn't, didn't want to, to uh, just quit. Probably each one of them at some point and some time had thought, I, maybe I just want to quit. How many of them had, had injuries along the way? Maybe they were set as, aside for a little while because of their injury, pulled muscle or strained muscle, or maybe even a broken bone in their practice. There were those obstacles. Those, there were those things before them, and that's what we can expect as well as Christians. That's what we can expect as we're running the race, as we're keeping the course, as we're keeping the faith. That's what Paul found in his life as well. Was it easy for Paul? Was it simple for Paul? Uh, was the race or the course just, oh, it was just so easy for him? No. It was difficult. There were obstacles. There were challenges. But he said he had fought the good fight. He had finished the course. He had kept the faith. And that's what the, the one who wins the medal, that's the one who wins the wreath that they would have worn back in the first century. That's the one who wins the crown of righteousness or who gains the crown of righteousness or the, or the crown of life in a spiritual sense. Keeping the faith, keeping the course, continuing on in spite of those struggles uh, that are made there. We know that there are times when, yes, it is easy. Those of you and anyone that's participated in any kind of a sport, you know that you can go out one day and almost do no wrong. I mean, it's just like, what? I'm hitting it. I'm hitting the ball. I'm catching the ball. I'm making the basket. I'm doing this. It's like I can't miss. But then you go out the next day, and it's like you can't hit. That happens to the best, play, best of the players, the, those that participate in, for example, the Olympics. That happens to professional athletes. You watch those teams. You watch those baseball teams. You watch those basketball teams. You watch uh, the football, professional football, and one team that you would expect that they're going to go out and they're just going to win. Everything's going to go right for them. Everything goes wrong for them that day. There are obstacles for some reason. Is it mental? 
Is it because they have some personal problem? Is it because that they have some injury that you don't know about? Whatever the case might be, there are always obstacles and challenges, and that's the way that it is for the Christian as well. But in spite of those things, in spite of those things, we keep the faith. We continue on. We get back up and we go forward again. But the next point that Paul makes here is that victory comes through preparation. We need to be participants, but also we need to be uh, preparing. And the preparation doesn't just come at the beginning. In other words, you know, all the people that were preparing for the Olympics were not just preparing for two, we'll say a, a year or two before, and then when they got over to Paris, they just stopped preparing. No. Between their races, they continued to prepare. They continued to prepare by taking care of themselves. They continued to prepare by eating correctly or doing their exercises or whatever routines that they may have had. Because preparation, in a sense, is not just at the beginning, but it's, it's really for the whole time. We continue in our preparation. We participate, and in that participation, we also are involved in continual preparation. And that's the way that it is. And that's really what Paul is talking about here, as he says here in verse 25. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 25, he says, And everyone who competes, uh, he says, And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate or has self control in all things. That's the preparation part. Now, in the first verse, he said, we've all got to participate, and everybody that participate wants to uh, gain the prize, wants to win the prize, wants to run in such a way as that they will obtain it. That's each one of us. But the participation is also involved, means preparation. And that preparation, as he de defines it here, depending upon your version, could be self-control, could be temperance. That's what the athletes are doing. That's what an athlete must do during the season. That's what an athlete, those athletes must, have, uh, do, must have done when they were participating in the Olympics. They had to have that continual temperance. Now, some probably didn't. No doubt there were some that did not have that self-control, that did not have that temperance, and, and they did something that they knew that they shouldn't do that would inhibit their being able to win the race, the bronze, or the silver, or the gold medal. And sometimes as Christians, we're the same way. We, we sometimes do things that we know inhibits our ability to win the race. But Paul says here, he, he says in verse 25, that everyone who competes for the prize it's, is temperate, is, has self-control. And you and I know that. We know that that's what it takes. We know that that's what is involved in this preparation for the race that we're running each and every day as Christians. This temperance, this self-control. The phrase here, temperate in all things or self-control in all things, would literally probably have referred to the practice sessions and, and, and the times when those athletes were uh, in between those participation or in, in, in between the events when they were doing the necessary things to be able to win. And it's the same with us. It's not just on Sunday morning and it's not just on Sunday evening, but we do the things that are necessary during the week as we live the Christian life to be able to keep running this race. And that's where, that's where, where it is. Paul is speaking here, of course, in the context of, of, of sports, and, and, and it might just seem a little bit obvious with what he's saying. But the application for us is spiritual, that the spiritual participation is essential. The spiritual preparation is, is essential. And how does all that come about? Well, just like the athlete has to, to seek out and do that which is uh, beneficial for the particular sport that they're participating in, whether that, re whether that mean uh, practicing, the, uh, that mean certain exercises or certain conditioning, 
certain trainings, certain foods, certain this or that. We as Christians, we, we have to do the same thing. And it begins, really, when you think about it, it begins with the Word of God because just like their preparation begins with being informed, someone has to help them. Someone has had to help them and train and coach them. There's not a, an athlete that went to the Olympics that didn't have a trainer. I wouldn't think so, anyway. At somewhere along the line, they had someone who was coaching them. They had someone who was training them. They had someone who was guiding them, someone who was encouraging them in what they needed to do. Well, we have that too. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction and instruction in righteousness. That's what we need. And he continues on that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished or equipped for every good work. We want to be equipped. We want to be thoroughly furnished. We want to be complete for all the works of running the race of the Christian life, the Christian race. And that begins with that instruction, guidance, and training that comes from the Word of God. It's impossible. <clears throat> it is impossible to run the race, to run the race that Paul was talking about, to run the race that the Hebrew writer was talking about, without that instruction, training, and guidance from the Word of God that can help us. It's essential. The word instruction is here in providing that training and guidance, just as the athlete needs that same guidance and training. It doesn't matter how good they are. It doesn't matter how professional they become. It doesn't matter every professional whether you're talking about and you, you, you're talking about the professionals of basketball or football or baseball or whatever they got or whatever they are, whoever they are, there's someone behind them training them. There's someone behind them guiding them. There is someone guiding them and helping them along the way. Because even the best of the athletes are not so arrogant or shouldn't be so arrogant that they don't think that they need they don't need any training or guidance at all. And just as they do, we do also. We do as well. But another part of that, of course, is for us in that process of training is that of prayer itself. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17, that we are to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. That's the part that we can have in that. As we keep our mind focused upon God, as we keep our mind focused upon that race that we're running, and so if we have the word of God coming into it and we have our thoughts going out toward the Father and toward, toward God, that will help us. That will help us in keeping the faith, keeping the course, running that race in a way that, is, that God would want us to do it. And of course, we know that Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25 speak of the, the fellowship that we need as well. The athletes... They, some, there are some sports where it's, yes, it's individual, and an individual might need to be uh, participate, he might need to be training uh, by himself, but for the most part, even the individual that's just training by himself, even if he's just running, or whatever his sport may be, he still, he or she, still needs to have someone in that fellowship with others of like mind with others of the like sport that are participating for that encouragement to, to build upon and to be strengthened upon as well. And in the same way we as Christians, we need that. We need that encouragement. We need that strength and help from one another. And we can see then that's, that's what Paul is referring to here. But the final thought, thing that we notice here that Paul refers to is the victory comes through also persistence. And so there's the participation, and then there's the preparation. And, and, I, and even Paul puts the preparation really after the participation because, in a sense, we never stop preparing. Yes, there's the initial preparation, but then there's the continued preparation. The part of that persistence is knowing what we're going for. Again, in 
1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 25, he says, and everyone who participates or who competes for the prize is temperate or self-control in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we an imperishable crown. You know, the athletes are participating for something that's just material. And, and, and it's something that it has value to them. It has value to them because they are the one that won that, crown, that, that medal. But in reality, it has not much value to anyone else. Maybe some people within the family, but, but it really has no value to us. Other than, well, yeah, they're from the United States, so they won a gold medal. But that, that thing that they won has value to them. But when we're talking about this crown that we're in the race for, it's a spiritual and it has, it has eternal value. The crowns or the, you know, the back in that time, of course, the wreaths or the crowns that they would have worn would have eventually just fallen apart. And the medals that people have today, sometimes they're just locked away in boxes that people have, and, and a couple of generations later, nobody even knows where they are. But the eternal crown is, some, is different. It's a crown of victory that is a crown of righteousness, that is a crown of life, that is a crown that is of an eternal nature. And so it comes through persistence, just as they must be persistent, they, that is the athlete, must be persistent in his training and in his participation. So we as Christians must be persistent in our Christian life as well. Paul says in verse 26 about this to some degree as well, when he says, therefore, thus I, th therefore I run thus not with uncertainty, thus I fight not as one who's beating the air. He knows what he's doing, and he's persistent, and he's focused. And that's the context about the spiritual race that we're in. But we often need help. Victory comes through being persistent. In the photo there, you see that <clears throat> this was from 1992, and his name is Derek Redman. Derek Redman was running in the 440 meters, 400 meters, I think it was. And he's just run, he began to run the 400 meters, and as he got to about 150, the hamstring just tore on his leg and he just fell down. You may have seen some, some video of this. And so everybody else is gone and he's, he falls down and he's hurt and he really can't even, can't even walk, but he gets up and he begins to walk. He didn't walk to the side, leaving the track, but he continued to walk. And he continued to walk toward the finish line. Well, the man helping there in that photo is his father. His father had such love and compassion for him that he, he left the stands and he went on down to, to the field. This is in the Olympics. And he helps his son walk to the finish line. And he walked across. He was able to cross the finish line. He was unable to do that. Yes, he had an obstacle. And yes, it was a, a very serious thing that happened to him. And he would not have made it by himself, but... Like, he had a father. He had someone who, who was there and who cared for him and who was willing to help him. We are in a race. We have a spiritual father. We have someone who loves and cares for us. We have someone that whenever we are injured spiritually, when we're hurt, whenever there are obstacles in our way, God, too, is our spiritual father to help us. And so the Hebrew writer writes, in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, he says, let us run with patience, with, with patience, the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher, the perfecter of our faith. With God and with Jesus, whatever happens in this life, as we're running the race, we know that they will be there to help us. We know that they will be there to 
spiritually speaking, pick us up. We know that they will be theirs, spiritually speaking, to carry us across that line as well, or that finish line as well. And that's the reason that Paul could say that he had fought the good fight, he'd finished the course, and he'd kept the faith. He, he realized that it wasn't just him, he himself, but he realized that it was the help that he had from his heavenly father. As we think about the race that we're in, as we think about this, we must be participants. We can't just stand on the sidelines. As we think about this, we must be participating, but at the same time, we must be, we must be preparing. Preparing each and every day because there are new obstacles, because there are new challenges, because tomorrow or today or tomorrow, we are still in that race. And then we must go with persistence with endurance, with patience, as we continue upon this, in spite of the obstacles that we might find in our way. But that begins by becoming a Christian. As we, we notice, we have to be qualified. And the way that we're qualified is God qualifies us, first of all, because he sent his son to the cross to pay the price for our sins. But then we, through faith, have to respond to that. And tonight, if there's anyone that would need or would want to respond to the gospel by belief, faith, by repenting of your sins, by confessing that Jesus, this belief in Jesus, and being baptized, then you can begin that race. You can be a participant, and you can be involved in all of these things that we've looked at tonight. Maybe someone else. Maybe someone else has, has stumbled, but you just need to seek the Father's help in asking for forgiveness, his forgiveness, that you might go forward. If you need to come tonight, we invite you to come as we stand and sing.